In this video on C Sharp Basics, let's take a look at polymorphism. So polymorphism is a way to present the same type or class, but the definitions of members perform differently. Now there is another type of polymorphism that we've actually already covered in this series, and that would be method overloading. Method overloading was a way for us to define the same named method, but have different signatures and each one of those methods with different signatures performed different behaviors. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about class polymorphism. So let's say that we have my other class, which is a type of my class, and therefore it has a total property, a class constructor, and then there's this add to integers method that's internal to the my class class. Now we're perfectly fine with the total property returning the value of the summed integers. But let's say that our class constructor now needs to accept a max total parameter. Now this max total parameter would be the value that we want to allow as the maximum total permitted. So if the value of one and two summed together exceeds the max total value, then we instead want to return max total. Now that is the actual business logic, the internal workings that we found in the add to integers method. So we need some way to override the behavior of the add to integers method, as well as the constructor so that we can modify the behavior of the class overall. Let's first address the total property. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the code snippet prop full to give myself an internal variable and a public property. Now the private variable is going to once again be called underscore total and the public property is going to be total. Then I'm going to go down here to my set and delete the set accessor. And now the Visual Studio code editor here is putting a little green squiggly line under total. My IntelliSense tells me my addition class total hides inherited member my class total. Use the new keyword if hiding was intended. So I could go ahead and go with the recommendation that IntelliSense says. So I'm gonna hide the base member by using the new keyword here within the definition of my property. Now this is perfectly fine and really probably the quickest way to do this, but I'm gonna show you an alternative way that we can actually override this total property. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put in the keyword override. Now immediately once I've done this, the total property has turned with a red squiggly line. It says cannot override inherited member because it is not marked virtual, abstract, or override. So we haven't really talked about access modifiers, but the override keyword is a way for us to modify the underlying property within the my class class. And because of that, it needs certain security access to the total property. And this goes back to the firewall that we talked about in the encapsulation video. Right now, the total property that's on my class is being protected in a way, even though it's being shared as public, it's not being permitted to be overridden by any subsequent classes that might be deriving from this my class class. In order to do that, I can use a special keyword that's mentioned here in the IntelliSense called virtual. So I'm gonna go back to my class and I'm gonna mark this public int total as a virtual property. Now that the property is virtual, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And you can see that the compiler no longer complains about this. Now we can proceed with changing the constructor. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another parameter of a data type int. I'm gonna call it max total. Now what I need to do is I need to also modify the code that is in the add to integers. So if I try to override the add to integers method, you can see it doesn't show up. And that's because if we look back at the my class class, we can see add to integers is marked as private. It's not even visible to members that inherit from the my class. In order to make the add to integers visible, I could certainly make this another public method, but instead of using public, 
I'm going to use the keyword protected. Now the protected keyword means that the method or property is only visible to any classes that inherit from this my class. So I'm still basically using encapsulation here. I'm still building a firewall and limiting the access to this add to integers method to only those classes that derive from the my class class. So let's go back to the add uh, the my addition class and now we can say override but once again we don't see the method and that's because of the same reason why we couldn't see the total property or override the total property before. We have to go back into the my class and we have to use the virtual keyword. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is protected and virtual. Now, if I go back into the my addition class, once again do override, we can see the add to integers method is available. Now Visual Studio went ahead and wrote out most of the code for me. And you can see once again, the base keyword here is being used to refer back to the base class. And it's calling on the add to integers method and passing in value one and value two, just like we would up here when we were passing value one and value two into the class constructor. But we don't want to just return the add to integers values back from the base class. We need to also check to make sure that this value does not exceed the max total. Now, if I try to include max total here, we're going to run into a small little problem. And that is we're trying to override a method, but now we're saying that the signature is different. So we're not really overriding it. We're in fact creating a brand new method. And that's certainly something we could do but I really want to focus on being able to override this method. So I'm going to take this out and we're going to do this a little differently. We're going to create another private variable inside of this, my addition class. And we're going to call this underscore max total. And now in our class constructor, we'll just assign to the private variable, the value that gets passed in as the parameter. Now we can use this max total variable here and we can check to see if the add to integers method on the base class returns a value that's too large. We're going to do this by creating another int sum variable and assign it the value of the add to integers method from the base class. And now what we can do is check to see if sum is greater than underscore max total. If it is, then we're going to reassign the value to sum of max total. So if the value of, if the sum of value one and value two is larger than max total, we're just going to assign to sum the value of max total. That way it never exceeds that value. Now, regardless of what sum is, we're just going to go ahead and return sum. Now we can go back into our class constructor and just like we do with the my class class, where we're assigning to the total property, the value from the add to integers, we're just gonna go ahead and do underscore total equals this, because we need to refer to this class, this my addition class, and we wanna refer to its add to integers method and we're going to pass along value one and value two so we've effectively overridden the total property and we've overridden the add to integers method let's go ahead and save this and let's go back to our class called program and we can see that the my addition class now requires that third parameter so let's go ahead and add that now but you can see that it's not doing any sort of hemming and hawing or saying that there's a compiler error when I leave the definition of my object as a type of my class. It still accepts this. And that's because both the my addition class and the my class object have the same identical properties and methods named to them. So the total property is still the same. The class constructor still accepts value one and value two, and the add to integers method 
is defined with the same value one and value two parameters. So if I go back to the program class, let's go ahead and save this and run this. So our application returned the value 11, and since five plus seven is 12, but we passed in the max integer to be 11, we can see that the behavior was exactly as we wanted to derive from the myAddition class. Now, some of you may be still confused by how this polymorphism works. And you're welcome to rewatch this video because I'm sure that it might help you if you can follow along again. There's some pretty complicated things involved here. But the next video is going to be dealing with abstraction. And I think that's really going to help you understand polymorphism much better.